Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. I've got some wonderful farmhouse DIYs for you, so grab a nice cup of coffee and let's get started. This is a beautiful crock that I picked up at the thrift store for $3.99. I love the little handles on it. It doesn't have a lid, but that's okay. I can make one. I'm going to take off the label and give it a good cleaning because it was kind of sticky. I always use a disinfectant wipe to clean up my projects. It gets them spotless. Then I'm going to take this outside, give it a coat of matte clear finish. That's going to dull down the shine as you can see here and it's going to help my paint stick to it better. I'm using my favorite stoneware croc kind of color which is very similar to the mineral in the Waverly chalk paint but this is just a household latex paint that I've added some talc to and I'm going to go ahead and give this a really good coat. Now for the first coat I'm going up and down and for the second coat I'm going to go across. That's just going to make sure that I get all of the nooks and crannies filled up and even any brush marks will get filled really well. I am using the Hippo Water Slide Decal Method for this project. I went ahead and printed my project onto the paper and sprayed it three times with matte clear finish and that is the most important step that you've got to do for this that's going to seal in the ink. As you see here I'm cutting it out fairly close to the image because I'm really comfortable working with the least amount of decal on there. The next step is to soak the decal in water. Now this is warm water. It's a little bit more than lukewarm, but it's not hot. And I'm going to just be holding this down until it is all underneath the water. I did end up having to flip it over. It kept wanting to curl up. You're going to leave it in here for about 60 seconds. And while you're doing that, you can prep your pot. I'm taking my finger and I'm just going to be adding a little bit of moisture, not a lot, just where my decal is going to go. And that's just going to give me the ability to move it around and make sure that it's in the right spot. I'm going to take the decal out of the water and using my thumbs in the front and my other fingers in the back, you can see that I just gently pushed up the decal off the paper just to get it to start to release. Then I'm going to hold my finger onto the top of the decal and very slowly and gently pull out the paper, making sure that the decal is going to be sticking on there. You don't want a whole lot of bubbles in this, but as long as your finger is damp, you can go ahead and work out all of the bubbles and everything that's there. Smooth things, move it a little bit. That's why you've got that little bit of water underneath because then you can still adjust it if you need to. Once you're done smoothing it out as best you can with your fingers, then you're going to take a tissue. You can take a soft rag or a paper towel I've just found out that using a tissue works best for me. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my fingers. I'm going to take the tissue and start from the center and gently push out all of the water and just get that all absorbed and nice and smooth. Now, a tip I can give you is take your time. I probably spent a good five minutes working on this, making sure that all of the bubbles were out, making sure that I didn't have any creases and you can be very gentle with it, but also firm at the same time. So take your time. Practice makes perfect. As I said earlier, do it a few times, maybe on some projects that aren't that important. I would probably try with just something on glass first and maybe on wood just to get the feel of how this works. I'm going to create a cardboard template because I want to make a lid for this. It ended up being just shy of four and three quarter inches and as luck would have it, this mug was the perfect size. So I'm gonna trace this out onto some cardboard, cut out the template, label it so I can keep it for future use, and then I'm gonna find a piece of wood in my garage to cut out with a jigsaw. 
here's my piece of wood. It happened to be a little scrap wood of cedar, so it was really easy to cut and work with. I'm just using, again, a Lysol wipe just to get off all of the dust. I wanna make sure that it's really nice and dust-free before I start applying some paint. I will let this dry for a couple of minutes first. I started using my walnut gel stain and just a soft rag to rub it in, but I didn't like the color. The orange was still coming through too much, so I decided to switch over just to my burnt umber acrylic paint, and I went ahead and just put it on. Some of the wood grain was showing through anyway, and along the sides, I really didn't fill it in too much. I wanted some of that natural wood to poke through but I really love how this one turned out it's an amazing crock effect and I'm really going to have a hard time parting with this one I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to sell it It has been a while since I've made a book stack, so I decided to do that today. I have a whole bunch of these smaller paperbacks that I picked up at a thrift store for 50 cents a piece. That money that I spent on these books is going 100% to a charity, so I don't feel bad taking these books apart. I've done my part already for that thrift store. I'm going to use a line of hot glue near the spine to glue all of these together. That will just hold them in place and then I don't have to worry about my twine or burlap or whatever accessories I add to it that that holds everything together. So I'm just going to line them up in the order of largest and thickest to smallest and thinnest. I found myself an image that I wanted to use for the spines of the book and I'm just tearing the paper from the back side so I don't get any of that white showing. I do have a little bit there but I'm going to clean that up. This image is something that I got off of pixabay.com which is also always listed in my description box but I'm going to have this different colored one available on my website under the free printables link. I also forgot to mention that the first project that Devonshire farms with the cow will also be available as a free printable. For this book stack, I decided to try a glue stick. I don't really like how wet the Mod Podge makes everything, and I was pleasantly surprised this works really well, if not better than the Mod Podge. You don't get any tearing of your paper, you don't get any wetness coming through, it doesn't wrinkle, it turned out really well. I always overlap my images a little bit on the top and the bottom, and I'm also going to be putting some glue on the back of my image. So now you can see the image here a little bit better. It's an old vintage truck in front of a barn. And like I said, it will be available on my website as a free printable in this sepia color, as well as the original color. I think the truck was red. So I'm just going to be smoothing it down and making sure that everything is stuck really well. And then I'm just going to set it aside to dry. I have some of this bamboo ribbon left over and I decided to use that. I really like using this for my book stacks because it doesn't have any fraying edges and it's actually quite stiff so you can bend it and crease it so it will actually sit nice and flat on your project. When you're working with burlap make sure you use something else other than your fingers to hold the hot glue in place. I also wrapped a piece of ticking stripe ribbon around the book stack. I'm going to add a couple of solo wood flowers, some greenery and a couple of extra little ribbons and this one is complete. I love how it turned out. I love that sepia colored truck. I think it's so vintage looking and I hope you like it too.
this project literally has one step. I have this wicker basket that has been hanging around at my cottage and I decided to bring it home and do something with it. So I'm going to be giving it one really good coat, a heavy coat of my DIY chalk paint. If you're interested in that recipe, you can go down to my description box and it will be listed there. I'm just using a rough brush so I can get into as many nooks and crannies as I can and I'm putting a pretty heavy coat on this. The last thing I'm going to do to this is just set it inside this black wrought iron basket or tray. It doesn't have a full bottom so I'm thinking there might have been something in it maybe something glass I don't know but anyhow this basket is a perfect fit and I think this is just a beautiful classic traditional farmhouse project. <music> I hope you enjoyed these farmhouse DIYs and got some inspiration to create some of your own home decor. If you like this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that you like what you see and they promote me more, which helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to stick around by hitting that subscribe button. The black arrow will point you in the right direction. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.